Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, Z here. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the parameters in my tank um, and touch on my uh, philosophy of reef keeping. Okay, let's start with the uh, major elements and uh, neutron levels. So for calcium, I keep it around 380 to 440. Um, I use the uh, base instant notion salt, which has a, a lower calcium level. Um, and it's about 3 damage ish out of the bucket. Uh, so it's hard for me to keep the calcium at a higher level. Um, but however, when, uh, whenever I push the calcium level over 450, it just fuses the uh, spiral bit warm growth, um, which I really hate. Um, so yeah, I, 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 so I just keep it around 400 ish. Um, yeah, doesn't really want to go over, wanting to go over uh, 440. So then um, alkalinity, um, I keep it around 8.3. Um, it's slowly dropping right now as my uh, aqua colonies are getting really big. Um, I have to adjust it uh, occasionally. So I have to test the level every week. Uh, just make sure it doesn't drop below 8. Uh, and then whenever I need to change the level, um, I basically just change it by uh, one to two mil a day uh, and the test daily to make sure it's stable. For magnesium, uh, I keep it around 1400 to 1500. Uh, since I have a torch garden, um, I prefer to keep my uh, magnesium level on the higher side. Um, I also change those in the amount the same way I change in alkalinity, like you know, one to two mil at that time. Uh, just also to keep it stable. I don't those other trace elements other than uh, adding aquaforest trade grow uh, since I have a refugian. Um, I add some of it uh, whenever I finish a water change. Uh, now neutron levels. I, I keep nitrate around 10 ppm. Uh, I find my aqua carrying up well. Um, when the nitrate is around 10, and I only test nitrate whenever I see my aquos uh, doesn't have a some like vibrant colors, uh, and also whenever I found uh, the nitrate is lower than eight, I will just feed a lot more, uh, like a lot more frozen food. Uh, since I have a mixed reef, so higher nutrient, it's it's uh, it's better. It's also better for other corals. Um, so usually I feed three times a day, um, basically two rounds of pellets on the auto feeder throughout the day, uh, and the one round of frozen food at night that I usually just control. Um, if I see nitrate is too high, I feed a little bit, little bit less. Uh, if I see nitrate is really low, uh, I feed a lot more frozen food. For the phosphate, um, I keep it around 0 0.03. Um, I rarely test my phosphate. Uh, I usually just look at my sand bed. If the sand bed starts getting more some like a brownish patches, then uh, my phosphate is a bit, little bit too high. Uh, and I'll just simply lower the amount of uh, frozen food that I feed. For dosing, um, I use ESV for uh, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Um, I use the big uh, four gallon bucket for the calcium and alkalinity and the, uh, I think, one gallon um, jar for the magnesium. Currently, I dose about 110 ml of calcium a day. Uh, the doser turns on every hour. Um, I, I also dose about 100 ml alkalinity a day as well. So it's slightly lower than the calcium uh, amount since the instant notion salt has a higher alk uh, comparing to the uh, calcium level. The doser for alkalinity also turns on every hour, uh, but it's 15 minutes before the uh, calcium drop, just to avoid the uh, precipitation. Uh, for magnesium, I currently dose about 20 mils a day. Um, it also varies on what type of magnesium I use. Uh, since ESV magnesium is constantly out of stock, when that happens, I will just use the Niles magnesium powder and then mix it myself. Um, I also dose Aquapower uh, simply because that's the only amino acid 
that I can put on a doser. Um, I don't really like to dose anything manually uh, since I will just forget about it and I can really um, don't want to take, take time to make sure every time I dose the exact same amount. Uh, so that really um, like affect about the uh, stability part of the uh, parameters. Well, stability part of the uh, thing. Uh, since we're talking about stability, um, I think that's one of the most important thing about keeping Nacroporous. Uh, but also, I think it's in general, it's still a very important factor to having a thriving reef. Um, also, of course, the uh, mixed, mixed reef as well. Uh, for me, it's, I think it's mainly about four parts. Uh, for um, stable salinity, uh, stable lighting, stable parameters, many elk, um, and the stable temperature. I think they all can just simply achieve by the equipment, like you know, uh, stable salinity. You can just uh, solve it by using auto top off. Um, I will definitely forget about topping off if I do have to do it manually. Um, yeah, so I, I think ATO is like one of the um, fundamental equipment that you 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 want to we want to use uh, for stable lighting. Um, I typically just set it and forget it. For my LED, I just use uh, AP Plus template, and for T5, it just turns on and off. Um, yeah, I mean, I I rarely change the uh, spectrum. Um, I even I when I do uh, photo shooting, I just using um, since my T5 is pretty strong, um, doesn't really that bad on the camera. Uh, for, so for uh, stable alkalinity level, um, you can simply achieve it by dosing and testing. Um, as long as you're dosing alkalinity, just make sure that you change it uh, very little at the time. Uh, so yeah, that's all you need to do about the alkalinity. Um, for stable temperature, um, I use a temperature controller. Uh, it's called Inkbird. Uh, it turns on the heater when the water is around 75 and turns it off uh, at 77. It also turns on a fan when the water is above, uh, it's above 78. Uh, in general, this, t this makes my uh, water sit around 77 to 78. Um, since I have so many pumps uh, and I use T5, um, my water temperature is kind of really high um, and my heater never turns on in the uh, summer, summertime. Um, at last, I'm going to touch on my uh, philosophy of reef keeping, which is just to uh, keep it easy for me uh, and to keep it very simple. Um, I don't really have enough time or effort to you know, uh, constantly monitor my tank, be, be on top of everything. Um, I occasionally kind of uh, really tired, you know, to, you know, I, I, I typically just miss out some of the water changes also. So yeah, I don't really kind of add things uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, I've been running tank with almost the same equipment since day one, uh, except adding more lights and adding more flow. Um, yeah, so another thing is that I eliminate as much of the potential costs. Uh, for instance, I only use TDS zero water. Um, I don't take chances on like Z TDS zero, uh, TDS one. Um, water. So when I have some issue, I don't really have to think about whether it's my source water causing the issue or something related. Um, and also I have a grounding probe in my tank. So I don't have to worry about whether the issue was caused by the stray voltage. Uh, since that's, that's the kind of one of the most difficult um, issue that you can troubleshoot. Um, yeah, so my tank setup is really easy and very minimal. Uh, so I don't have to troubleshoot a lot of pieces of equipment in my tank to find the cause of the issue. Um, in, in general, you don't really need um, all those fancy equipment to have a thriving reef. Um, at last, um, I don't use chemicals to fix issues or alter water parameters. 
Um, usually that would just causing that will just cause more issues later down the road. Um, I typically just do water changes uh, and use carbon. Uh, since the majority of the tank issues can be categorized to either water contamination or nutrient related issues. Um, uh, yeah, that's 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 all about it. that's all about it. Um, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. So see you next time.